what's going on guys welcome back to another video here um so little update for you guys i've been working on our 825 bobcat skid steer here uh off camera i put in a couple hours of work uh just trying to diagnose this if you didn't see the last video we were having issues with the hydraulics they were very jerky weren't working weren't lifting so we were having issues so what i did off camera um I took the, there's a little fiberglass lid that uh, covers in the hydraulic tank here. Uh, you can see the pumps right now. So you have the first hydrostatic pump. I believe that does the right hand side. Second one here does the left hand side. And then there's actually a charge pump in this section here. And that does your hydros. And then you have the gear pump on the back. Now that right here, that's what does our lift. So that's lift and auxiliary. That feeds, or that little gear pump there, it feeds the valve at the back. Now with that, we did find what's causing the aeration. Uh, we have a pressure relief uh, going over somehow. So if we have a bad spring, if we have a bad valve, one of those things we got to figure it out now i'm going to fire this thing up i'm going to get it warm and then i'm going to show you guys what i see before i go any further um just so i can show you the problem i'm having in case you're at home doing this with yours or you know any bobcat uh how do i say this um like if you're having the same problem with a skid steer at home um, you can go off this give you guys a little bit of an idea now. I'm not a hydraulic specialist But I am a heavy-duty mechanic. I deal with this stuff kind of every day So this is kind of my way of diagnosis Diagnosing and going through to get this fixed. So I'll set you guys up All right, I'm just standing outside uh, it's Been running for a little bit here. I don't want to run it too long just so I don't damage the pumps I'm gonna go inside, show you guys. Now I'm gonna point at the case drain on number two hydrostatic pump. Uh, you'll see a stream of fluid come out. I'm gonna just try and talk now, show you guys a quick clip, and then uh, I'll shut it off and we'll talk some more. So this is what this not running anymore now right here and right here those are our case drains now as you can see this one had no stream coming out this one over here she's shooting pretty good I'll see if I can but I'll try and put up a schematic now each one of these pumps they have two relief valves one for forward one for reverse uh, they're high pressure reliefs and then on the back end pump here right here in this charge section I believe right in here there's actually a charge pressure relief valve now I imagine both of those are like your high pressures they'll feed back to your case that's where they'll relief to and then your case drain will relief um, I don't know on that charge pressure relief valve but it might so what I'm gonna do is very simple because this is our pump that's having issues i'm going to swap these plugs or not the plugs sorry i'll get this out of the way i'm going to swap uh the relief valve from here with this one see if that makes a difference we'll know because this one will start pissing fluid if not i'll do the other side see if that makes a difference if not well then we know it's probably our case drain um, from the charge so then I'll pull the charge pressure one out we'll have a look at it see if it's broke um, you know just simple diagnostics it's cheap um, and that's without using a gauge of course I could put gauges on everything see what's going on I don't have those here I don't have test fittings so we're gonna do it the old way kind of the more simple way don't mind the shakiness here but these are our relief valves. I'll try and get in good light. Get this to focus. That's all it is. 
that's all that comes out behind this cap. Now the cap, it's just an ORB-12 and then it's got a little spring in it. Now don't do what I did. I actually dropped this one into the tank. Um, thank God I have a magnet and then I had to actually dig it out from inside the hydraulic oil. But so those just those little cylinders are relief valve cartridges. They just go in here. So here is a part number. Let's see if I can get this to focus. So it's a 32040-YA and it's a 3750 PSI. That's what these are. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna switch those around. We're gonna fire it up, see what it does. If it doesn't change anything, I'm gonna do the other side and so on and so forth. I wanted to show you guys this. I found it a little bit odd, but um, this is what I found behind the charge pressure spring. So of course you have your ball in your seat, or your ball, which is this is just a little cap. You have your spring, but behind this, honest to God, this looks like a brake fitting, like a furled brake fitting, and that was behind this. So I don't know if that's right or not. Of course, yes, it would add spring pressure, but really, come on, does that look right? So I'm gonna have to do some research. I'm gonna leave you guys off here for now. Uh, cause I'm done looking tonight. I got a bunch of schematics I gotta go through. Uh, just fluid diagrams and then, uh, try and figure out parts for this thing. But, uh, second half of this video, hopefully we'll be fixing this. So, day two of this video, um, it's like three or four days after we filmed the first part working on the skid steer. I just wanted to go over something here with our Super Duty. You know, you guys know we got a new truck on the way, but... I had something shitty happen there the other day going to work. Driving down to gravel, you know, nice morning. Here's this deer standing on the side of the road. You know, he wasn't moving. Oh, what do what happens? I get right close to him. I'm going fairly slow. I went to go drive around the damn thing. What does he do? He winds up and runs right into the side of my truck. So, you can still see the marks. He hit right here. Now, of course, I was like, okay... I got out with a flashlight and I'm looking, I'm like, okay, nothing wrong with my truck. Well, here my girlfriend just pointed out, oh, you have a dent on your truck. So you can see where the little bastard hit right there. His head hit here. Um, then it comes up the door. He smoked the door handle and then his body hit here. There's a little dent here. And then of course he rolled off the back of the truck. He hit the tire, something hit here. I didn't really see what all happened, but I got this dent here now. So I've seen guys take a pot of boiling water, pour it on something like that. Of course, it tenses up the metal, or it, it expands it and then tenses it again. Might be able to pull it back into place. So we're going to try that here now. It might work, it might not. I might have to pull the door panel off the inside, just push it back out because it didn't really do any damage. The crease is still here, so it should just need to be popped out. Hopefully this works. So I got a kettle on to go. I'm going to set you guys up. I'm going to try and pour boiling water on it. Hopefully it pops it out. Well now what? Is it supposed to cool and then pop or how does this work? I really don't know. I wonder if we slam the door now, does it pop out? No. I might have to pull the door skin.
Perfect. Look at that. Can't even tell now. So that actually worked really well. I uh, I pulled the door panel off here. Now it's super easy. You pop like this cover off here. Uh, you got a bolt here. You got a bolt there. Then you got a bolt here. Bolt here. And there's two on the bottom side of the panel. One there and then one up there. Undo those. Door comes off. Or like this inside panel comes off. Now careful, you do have a little bit of stuff there holding it on. Don't wreck that. And then I just peeled back this uh, sticky stuff. It's like a door seal. I used my hammer. Where did I put that now? Right here. I put this in the door and I just pried outwards. And as you guys heard, that popped that out. It looks really well. You know, there might be a scratch or two, but that'll buff out. So let's go get back to work on that skid steer. We went ahead, um, we're back here with the skid steer. I'm gonna just show you guys. I did pull the gear pump off the back. Um, now, the reason I did that, um, in the start of this video, we were going through, uh, I'm trying to diagnose this. Of course, our auxiliary circuit for tilt, lift, and of course the auxiliary pedal. Uh, we have very sporadic, uh, oh, how do I say this, sporadic hydraulic pressure. Um, so it feels like it's very jerky, it's not lifting. Uh, almost feels like it's going over relief. Well, what I was able to find, um, I know at the start, like, I showed you guys that this uh, K-strain was shooting fluid. Now, I went through, I read a bunch of technical data. Now this little gear pump right here, this is supposed to put out, I believe, 12 gallon a minute. So when you're at an idle and when you're not using, you know, your drives and you're not using any auxiliary, that K-strain should have um, more fluid coming out than the rear. So thinking about it, at idle, a 12 gallon a minute pump. You know, you should have, like, the amount of case strain there that we have. That should be about acceptable. So, that's not actually a problem. Yes, it does need a drain line, but that's not uh, not exactly what our problem is here. So, I also figured out there was another guy that had a similar Bobcat, an 843, I believe it was. Same thing happened. He actually had the gear pump shaft snap off. So, that's what I wanted to look at. So, I pulled ours off. Um... This is the head unit of it. Um, this is your drive. So you can see here on the splines, if this thing will focus, there's actually quite a bit of damage on three of them. But I looked at like the female side coupler that's in the back of the hydrostatic. It looks fine. So I don't know if someone put that in there like that or what the deal is. There's also, as you can see here on the um, inside so because you have a gear pump like this is the suction side of your pump uh, fluid comes in and then it's moved around the outside here like you don't have fluid that goes between the gears it uses the gears as like a paddle and then it brings it around and then of course you have pressure here which pushes it out so Looking here, there's a little nick on this side, and there's a nick here on this side. Let's see if it'll focus. I hope you guys can see that, but there was damage in it. It does look fairly clean on the outsides. So, um, definitely something to uh, be concerned about, but it should be okay like that. You know, you're... I might be able to set... Oh yeah, here we go. So this one should sit like this, if I can get it in. So it doesn't really make contact there, but it does free, like spools nice and free on each side. No, it is dry, that's why it's tight, but like it doesn't look worn out. There's not much outside play, so really this gear pump, there shouldn't be anything wrong with it. And... Um, we'll go back to this. There's a couple springs in there, so I don't know if that's just trying to hold pressure on the side plate there. 
that's that copper um, but yeah the shafts good it seems fine so I don't know there's got to be another problem I don't know if it was pulling air in through our suction side because that wasn't overly tight so it could be I might have to buy some new hoses or we could have another relief in the system going I'm not sure so I'm gonna have to look into it uh, some more and uh, we'll try and figure it out but I'm gonna end this video off here now uh, this is just a quick little update for you guys and then uh, once I get up or once I figure out more and uh, once we actually get somewhere with this I'll go through and I'll do a good video explain what I find all that but uh, thanks for watching this video hope to see you next time